Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Stuart. Stages by 40 Watt Sun. Love your channel. Keep it up. Cheers. So let's dive into this. We've got Stages. This is a 16 minute epic maybe i don't even know what kind of music we're in for 40 watt sun makes me think metal also a lot of what i get is metal so that's where my mind is at but we'll see what happens when we dive in let's do it Okay. Oh, bass coming in great. Really nice contrast here. The melody, what the guitars and bass are playing, make me feel light. But the tones of the guitars, the, the song itself makes me feel heavy. Really dwelling on this, taking their time. When did this come out? 2016, so relatively recent. Really love the vocal delivery. More than I would ask. He did ask, opened it up, came up a few notes, fell down a bit, narrowed it. Just the whole phrasing of that sounds great. We have a drone over here.
As far as I can tell, the tempo is really loose too. I mean, it's slower, so I'm not going to say that my rhythm is perfect on it either. As I've mentioned in the past, slow tempos are tough to get perfect. But sometimes it feels like it's behind my feeling, and other times it's ahead of it. But generally, as long as the band stays together, that's really all that matters. <clears throat> double time because we've introduced more notes but I think the tempo is still the same isn't there? So the drums do add a little bit of variety. The drums and the vocals are what's providing us the smallest amount of distraction from the monotony of all of it. Ooh, what 
what an interesting chord to go to. Such is my love for you. And just lands on some sharp dissonance. The ride symbol at the end of the last phrase came in a hair bit early and I thought we were moving towards an accelerando. We had the snare roll that sort of went into that too. And then coming back to this, the loop of the phrase, it's back to the same tempo. So there's a little bit more of that temporal fluctuation going on. Really nice slide effort to that. The drums were really pushing the production though. We got to see just how large the sound sphere is, where the volume cap is at. Started clipping there.
And it just ends. All right. So there is like three ideas in this entire song here. Long time viewers, you know this ain't my cup of tea. But I think I know what it's going for. And I think it lands that with mixed results. But I did generally enjoy, genuinely is the word I wanted there, genuinely enjoyed parts of this. The bass sounds fantastic. It has some really cool licks. I was going to say here and there. It actually has a really cool lick that it plays a lot. Uh... And it does a great way of pairing off of what the guitar does compositionally there as well. It's just a really nice back and forth that gives us some movement in sort of an explosive way and then some movement in a more melodic way. And we get this back and forth between the bass and the, uh, the electric guitar. There's a fuzzy haziness over all of this thanks to the distortion uh, and compression on the guitar, but also the compression on the drums. We don't really hear them too much. There's a little hints of some staticky stuff, but when the drums really go ham and we get like four crash cymbals back to back on four beats, we can really hear a lot of clipping going on at the high end. There's a lot of compression and uh, extra volume amplification on the drum kit that it just barely sits on the threshold of normally and can cross over into clipping when played heavily. It all comes together to create this weight. The song feels heavy. When paired with the slower tempo, it just drags. It's not even just the slower tempo though, as I was talking a couple of times throughout there, there's an inconsistency to attack as well. Not every downbeat is where the downbeat is supposed to be. Many of the instruments attack just a hair before or just a hair after in a way that almost makes me think we're in a really strange time signature that constantly fluctuates. I think what's actually happening is there's just not a lot of respect for, for tempo in here. And so sometimes, uh, you know, we, get, we, we rush a little bit, we drag a little bit. It gives it that human element to the track. But when you mix the dragging with the low tempo and the largeness of mass of these uh, instruments, it creates something that is sonically exceptionally heavy. It contrasts with the composition, though. Musically, a lot of this is on the brighter side. We did have that really interesting tense dissonance there around minute, what was that, like 9 or 10 or something like that. And there are some sections that are a bit gloomier. But on the whole, I'd say this song sits around bittersweet to positive throughout a lot of it. It makes me feel light. And so when we mix the notes with the sound of the notes, we get lightweight. Heavy, 
feathers? I, I don't know. I feel like I am buoyant on the wind while also plummeting to the ground simultaneously. I think it's driven home even how it's driven home even more how further this divide is when we reach what I can only guess is the chorus and we get that uplift moving from the neutral leaning towards positive to just a wholly positive section entirely and well the big fuzzy sound just it's an odd combination I'm not saying it doesn't work. There's a lot of positive, harmonically uh, composed shoegaze out there. Same with post-metal. Just really heavy sounds with brighter harmonic and melodic ideas to them. It's not completely unheard of. It's just in this particular fashion, I think also due to the sparsity of everything. There's a guitar, a bass, maybe a second guitar at some times, the drums... And that's really all that we have in a lot of these sections. The production also sheds light into sparsity as well, because as big as these sounds are, there's still a spaciousness. I can hear the bass by itself. It's not completely overshadowed by the sound of the guitar. The drums are clearly heard. The vocals are clearly heard. There's a spaciousness to everything. There's a sparseness to filling up the sound sphere. It doesn't go for the wall of sound that shoegaze does, or particularly post-metal. It utilizes this big, heavy sound, but doesn't fill the space with it. And so we end up having a series of these competing ideas that makes it feel like a musical oxymoron. It is light, but it's also heavy. And it works. <laughs> like, I'm not saying this because I'm pointing out that it's a, a terrible decision or, or anything like that. It's just a really unique feeling that I think 40 Watt Sun has, has landed upon through this, this contrast in the notes, how they're making me feel, but the delivery and how that's making me feel. And it's not that they clash they come together in a way where i feel them simultaneously they complement each other in a way that the descriptions wouldn't make you think they would and i found this to be the most fascinating aspect of the track is that it feels like soaring through the air while carrying a boulder and so you have the freedom of flight but you feel you're constantly descending. <laughs> you're going to hit the ground eventually. This high has a time limit. This euphoria is limited. That's sort of the vibe I get. And with that limit comes its own negative feelings. Knowing that this can't last forever has its own emotional impact on someone. So, yeah, it's very peculiar, but it works. So I have no idea how they came to this sound, <laughs> but it works so well. Now, compositionally, there's not a lot going on. Like I said, we have three main guitar riffs. We have two main vocal patterns, two or three drum patterns with some variations as far as fills go, and like two, dr uh, two bass guitar ideas. Those are really low numbers for a 17-minute song, 16-minute song. Y'all heard it. I heard it. The song drags on. Now, I think that's the purpose of it. I found it to be a negative. I think the first six minutes I was okay with. The vocal story was there. I was kind of catching up on that since I didn't really have to listen to any changes in the instrumentation. 
but as far as I could tell, many of the lyrics were the same on the second set of like, I don't know, we, we went back to this opening vibe, this verse, <laughs> uh, instrumentally, uh, and I think the lyrics were similar there as well, though there were like five minutes between, so maybe I just forgot the lyrics, I don't know. They felt familiar, though. What I'm saying is it didn't feel like there were a lot of lyrics to it, either. Sparse on that realm as well. And when we did return back to our second verse, we repeated lyrics. So, musically, I didn't have anything to dig into. And lyrically, this time around, I didn't have anything to dig into. And I really, at this point, felt... I wish the song were wrapping up. And of course, we were only halfway through at this point. <laughs> it is a song that is fine saying, this is what I'm doing. If you don't like it, there's the door, but I'm not changing things. Literally and metaphorically. The song's not going, I'm not going to change anything about the song, but I'm literally not changing anything in the song. <laughs> we're going to stick on this idea. For a long time. It blew my mind when I realized the, the first time we had that change. I was like, ah, there it is. And I look at the time. We're six minutes into it. That is a long time to sit on one single idea that already by itself is rather sparse. The chord progression in here is sparse as well. It is four chords, sure, but the progression is... One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. It takes about 20 ish, 25 seconds to get through the full eight chords that we go through. Or through the full eight chord progression. There's still only four chords within there. And most of that is just bouncing back and forth between two of them a, a type of resolution and a, uh, a tension. Tension and resolution, tension and resolution. And then we have our uplift at the end that really drives home a sense of brightness and then full completion to take us back to the beginning. It creates a full cycle where the where the resolution and the tension going back and forth creates sort of like a half resolution. We are going back and forth between these two, but it doesn't feel like a cycle. It just feels like a pendulum moving back and forth between two uh, ideas. And so when we get those last two chords that give us a full progression to it, it feels like we're finally getting to see a bigger picture. And of course, that's cut short too. Whatever brightness that third chord gives us, whatever resolution that fourth chord presents to us, we're back to the mundanity of the back and the fourth, the tension and the bass. It's like, it's like looking forward to Friday because you got a party or maybe you're going to go to a theme park or maybe you're hitting... And just a nice restaurant with some friends, you know, just something out of the ordinary. You know it's going to be a good night. It's going to be lots of laughs. You're going to create some memories. But up until that, you got sleep, work, eat, sleep, work, eat. There's a cycle to that, sure, but it's not great. <laughs> and then you get to the end, you're like, ah, oh, this is awesome. And then you're back to the grind. And then maybe next Friday you do it again. You're looking forward to it. And that's what ended up for me. I kept looking forward to that seventh and eighth chord. The ones that actually gave the, the back and forth that we have on the previous six purpose. It gives them meaning. It, it makes the whole thing feel like a cycle rather than just a fluctuation. I'm sure this is entirely purposeful. The feelings that I went through with this is probably what uh, they intended for it, but it's just another way that the song drags. It finds so many ways to take... It's not even that it takes forever. 16 minutes is not a long song. But it feels like it takes forever. It feels like it was probably a 25, 30 minute track to me. That's how long it felt like we were in this song because it just never did anything. 
And then on top of that, the slow tempo and the dragging, like it's so many pieces come together to make it feel even longer than it is. It, it, it happens on so many aspects, on so many layers. I can't believe that it wasn't intentional to bring, how do we make it feel like it drags temporally? How do we make it feel like it drags performatively in the rhythmic area? How do we make it feel like it drags the, the harmonically? I'm, I, it feels like they ask these questions. I think even the repetition of the melody, the vocal line being the same melody, for the most part, over and over, there were some minor things. I pointed out this really nice uh, slide up into a higher note and then a little run back down. Like there are some nuances to it, but for the most part, the melody even gets monotonous. They found a way to create temporal drag in every aspect of this song. And from that perspective, just awesome <laughs> you know you go out of your way to make something like this you go all the way out they, they, they're like we're not going to do this halfway this song's going to drag it's going to drag <laughs> every single element i'm kind of blown away by that the conviction for it and the ingenuity of finding this in every single element and leaning into it it really makes those brighter moments where the tempo does pick up we had that double time in what i thought is the chorus uh double time feel anyways we were just playing eighth notes <laughs> the tempo i think didn't change at all it makes these moments stand out it makes them feel like a, a second wind a, a, a gust of wind behind you a weird way to adapt that <laughs> Uh, pushing you forward, giving you some momentum. It, it feels like there's a little bit of movement to your life. And of course, it's short-lived. We get back to the drag. That's how it is everywhere here. Every moment of release, of happiness, of brightness, of positivity, of movement is short-lived. And, well, a little spurt against the monotony that exists elsewhere. I do like his vocals, though. He has an interesting way of shaping phrases that I think adds a lot of character that's much needed to the track. And while I'm not going to say it was perfectly employed all the time, there were moments when I picked up on it, I'm like, yeah, that is really nice. And it makes me think that if this group wanted to, I mean, I've only heard this one song, so maybe this is a typical for them, but if they wanted to, they could create something that was fairly palatable. I think everything about this showcases strength of musicianship. It's just the execution they wanted was this, and they went full on into it. And that also shows strong understanding of idea, how to execute on it, to execute on it, and you need the skill sets to do all of that. So when I say that this is boring or monotonous or... Um, clashing in some ways I, I I say that with the understanding that it takes skill to do this and that I I'm highly appreciative of this from an artistic perspective casually not my not my jam <laughs> I'm not going to listen to this again in my life probably but from an artistic angle Composer to composer, kind of envious. This is just executed so well and hones in so perfectly on a single concept and nails it that I can't help but enjoy it from that angle. I'm going to hit some lyrics and we'll see where that takes the conversation. Now I say this with all the love in my heart for this track. These are some emo lyrics. Uh, well, maybe. That borderline goth? Definitely somewhere in that realm, though. It is a song about trying to win someone back. He says, what have I brought to you? My love, that you have followed me. It is all my heart is worth and more that I would ask of you. Just says, you know, 
I love you so much and I don't feel like I've really done much to improve your life, but you have done so much for me. I count myself lucky that you're here with me. He says, but I was afraid of a world where you didn't exist. An empty space I was not walking through. But you were there, between myself and the darkened wings. You took the pieces of our lives and made us something new. I'm not a great person. I've got a darkness within. But you, you improve me. And together we've improved our lives. Here's the turn, though. You don't see me trying, though, do you? There's there's the thing right there. Before this, it's like straight up love song. <laughs> I'm glad you're in my life. I'd give anything for it. I'm so lucky to have you. We've made such a great life together. And then the but. But you don't see me trying. He says, so if you want me to, he says, if you want to surrender, that's what we'll do. If you want me to carry on, we'll do that too. He says, such is my love for you. However you want to go about this, that's the way we'll go. He says, the heart of the matter that the both of us can't hide beats on against us with the rhythm of the tide. It's never ending. Whatever this is, it's going to go on forever. He says, and through this apathy wider than the sky, I'm feeling everything like nothing in my life. Oh, I missed one important... Dang! <laughs> I was like, wait, that's not the line I thought I was going to read. No, a stanza earlier says, As the night falls around us, pressing us apart with the weight of silence. So there's the there's the wedge. There There's a force separating them. And that force is darkness and silence. The opposite of light and communication, of positivity and connectedness, Right? So he took something that people typically say, you know, in relationship, you're keeping me in the dark. You're not communicating. You're not talking with me. I, I try to have a conversation with you and just silent, right? And making that into physical manifestations of forces that keep the two people apart. So yeah, that's, that's the whole song. And I'm feeling everything like nothing in my life. And it says, you know, if you want to split, we'll split. If you want to stick together, we'll stick together. I, I'll do what you want. I, I know there's this force keeping us apart. I know part of it's me. It's my night. It's my darkness. But, it, you know, if we split, I'll tell you, everything's going to feel like nothing for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's 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 real gothy. It's very emo. You know where I think it sits, because like it's a bit too melodramatic for pure goth. Goth can get really melodramatic, right? But like this feels a bit too much, and that's that's what kind of puts me into the emo territory. But I feel like it's too dark for emo. It's mall goth. <laughs> this is mall goth poetry right here. Which I so I suppose fits with sort of the uh, the doomier vibes in the music. Like it's not doom metal, right? Not at all. But the slow tempo, the heavy uh, distortion. I think the only thing it's missing is like the wall of sound and the darker chords, and you would have doom metal. So yeah, the doom and gloom with these gothy lyrics. I mean, it, it all fits together. I'm not I'm not saying that it doesn't. And like I said, I I love them. I, I'm all here for melodramatic emo adjacent lyrics. <laughs> I've said that before. I'll say it again. I love the campiness that, that emo lyricists tend to bring to the table. And this just fits right in there. I'm, I'm fully on board with this. And yeah, it all fits together. Like I said, the doom and gloom of the lyrics with the heavy weight of the music. Even the lethargy of it, I think, fits. Not even just talking about what seems to be this being a long a long thing in the making, right? 
This isn't just something that came up overnight. His darkness has been there since the beginning of the relationship. And it could be that this silence is something that has slowly wedged its way in. It's not like he just stopped communicating. Or that they've just stopped communicating recently. This has been a problem, it feels like. And so, this conversation not only feels like it is a long time in the making. But also that this moment and everything that comes from it is going to heavily impact this person's life. And it could feel like he's waiting on the answer. Are you going to surrender? Do you want me to carry on? How does this work going forward? And waiting on the reply for that answer can feel like ages. (laughs) Especially if the other person says, I need some time to think about it. Those days are going to feel like weeks. And this song feels like that, at least to me. As I mentioned, it doesn't feel like 16 minutes. We've listened to 16 minute songs that go by in a flash. This is not one of those. It all just works together so well. And it just solidifies the fact that I really freaking appreciate this. It is not a song I enjoyed listening to. It is not one I'm going to return to anytime soon, if ever. But I'm really glad I heard it. Because, well, I was going to say this group, I actually read while I was looking at this. This is a one-man project. Patrick Walker. Singer, guitarist, and songwriter. Actually, let me look real... Do we have a person... I don't have a personnel list. I was curious who did the drums, because it doesn't say drummer there. I assume he might have also done them too. Uh, Yeah, just has a vision and fully executed it at 110%. The end result is just... It's a beautiful understanding of everything he wanted to do, and he just nails it. And as much as it's not my cup of tea, I can fully appreciate what it's doing and understand that it's it's just it's great at what it's doing. Those are my thoughts. 40 Watts Sun's Stages. What did you think of this track? Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said? Correct me on. Give me your own perspectives or opinions on. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. Takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three of those. That uh, wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. We'll continue on with post-hardcore week and check out some more cool music after that. (laughs) Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. (laughs) 